Today we're going to talk about the founding of Rome. Now, as you have already watched my video about the Trojan War, you know how it ends with the Trojan War. The city of Troy was destroyed, the survivors were being enslaved, the Greeks came up as the victors, the Greeks came up as the conquerors. Now, apparently, after Homer wrote Iliad and Odyssey, 800 years later, someone by the name of Virgil wrote another book, the third book, the third epic book, known as the Aeonid. Yes, Aeonid. The book of Aeonid, written by Virgil. The story is about someone by the name of Aeneas. Now, who is Aeneas? Aeneas is like one of the survivors of Troy. Yes, apparently, according to the story, just the night before the city of Troy was being captured by the Greeks, Aphrodite, or according to the Romans, known also as a Venus, warned Aeneas that he must escape before the city fall, before the city was captured by the Greeks. So the next day, Aeneas, he managed to escape together with his family and also his father and some of his followers escaped from the city of Troy before the city of Troy was being captured by Agamemnon and just in the nick of time. Now, the story goes on, Aeneas was looking for the place to live, a new home, I mean, a new place where he could call as home for his people. The journey of finding this place took about 10 years. Sounds familiar? Yes. The story got inspiration from the book of Odyssey, which is the story of Odyssey, looking for his way back home to Ithaca. Yes, it's similar. So after 10 years of journey, Aeneas finally found a place where he would call it as a home, somewhere in Italy. And Princess Lavinia is the daughter of King Latinus. King Latinus is the king of the Latium kingdom. That is where we get the word, that is where we get the word Latin. Yes, Latin as the language and the cultures of the Romans. And the story of Aeneas end up as a happily ever after story. You know, married with a beautiful princess and then become a king of Latium and then they live happily ever after. Several hundred years later, the descendants of Aeneas and also Princess Lavinia is someone by the name of Numitor. Yes, King Numitor of Latium. Now, King Numitor of Latium, he was the rightful king of Latium. He had an evil brother, someone by the name of Amulius. Now, one day, Amulius, out of his jealousy, he dethroned his big brother. Just like in the Disney franchise of a Lion King, only the difference is Amulius, he did not kill his brother. He did not kill Numitor, the rightful king of Latium. He put him into prison. And then Amulius, he claimed himself to become the king of Latium. Yes, he took it by force. And to make sure that nobody's going to claim the throne away from him, he got rid of the last heir of King Numitor, which is a daughter, which is a princess by the name of Princess Rhea. Yes, Princess Rhea, not Rhea, Rhea. How Amulius got rid of Princess Rhea? By killing her? Of course not. That is just too obvious. That is just too brutal. So what Amulius did, he assigned her as the priestess of Vesta. Now, Vesta is the Roman version of the Greek goddesses by the name of Hestia. Yes, the goddess of hearth, which is the symbol of Hestia is the fire. Now, as the priestess of Vesta or the priestess of Hestia, I mean, Rhea must take care of the sacred fire in the temple of Vesta. The fire cannot die. And, and as the part of the oath or as the part of the vows, Vestal priestess or Vestal virgins, they must promise they will not going to get married for the rest of their life. If they broke the law somehow, if by chance that they broke the law by marrying with someone or having a child with someone or failure to keep the fires on, then the punishment for the priestess is to be buried alive. Yes, such a tragic punishment for every priestess of Vesta. Now, why Amulius did this? Well, he's being sneaky. He removed the possibility of Rhea someday to have a child. The future child will challenge him as a king, which is he doesn't want it to be happen. And at the same time, he put Rhea so somehow like a prison by letting her to be occupied with the duty of a priestess. 
she cannot go anywhere. She just have to stay there in the temple until for the rest of her life. One day, something strange happened to Princess Rhea that worked as the priestess of Vesta. She got visited by Mars. Well, Ares is the Greek version of the God of War. Now, Mars is the Roman version of the God of War. Okay, this is getting confusing, yes. Anyway, she was visited by the God of War himself, and then, now nine months later, Princess Rhea gave birth to a twin. Yes, a twin. She named the twin as Romulus and Remus. And as the consequences for the Vestal Princess to have a child, then she must be exiled. She must be buried alive. That's what happened. So Princess Rhea must be buried alive according to the rules. And meanwhile, the twin. Now Amulius the evil king ordered his servant to kill the twin. So there will be no future potentials that someone will claim the throne away from him. Now apparently the servant they did not now apparently apparently the servant did not have a heart to kill a cute innocent twin. Who would do that? Okay, who would kill a cute baby? No one, right? I mean, so the servant instead of like killing the twin, the servant kind of like, you know, make a basket and then the twin, I mean, the servant make a basket and then put the twin on top of a basket and then after that, send the twin on the basket in the Tiber River. Now, Tiber River is the only river that flows through the city of Rome. They send it, now the servant send the twin into the river and then let the river current takes away the twin. Hopefully, the nature will claim the life of these twins. But so what happens next is probably similar like the story of like Moses and when baby Moses was being sent away into the Nile River. Only the difference is the twin was being like, you know, the, the twin was being stranded in the riverbanks and then were being, and then the, were, were stranded in the riverbank. And then instead of like, you know, Egyptian princess saving the twin, it was a female wolf. Yes, a female wolf. The female wolf, instead of like, treating this twin as a meal, the female wolf adopting this twin as its own cubs, yes, as its own puppy. And so the twin, Romulus and Remus, they were being raised by a wolf. That is why it become a legendary story. Romulus and Remus, they grew up together with their mother as a wolf. So this is kind of like become another Disney movie reference, like Tarzan, only the difference is Tarzan was being raised by the Gorilla, I guess. I don't remember. Gorilla or apes. Now, only the difference is for Romulus and Remus, they were being raised by a wolf. Now, several years has passed. Now, the twin were founded by a shepherd by the name of Faustulus. He was a simple shepherd. He rescued the twin. He took and adopted the twin as his own child. And, well, at this moment, I can imagine the encounter must be like very weird and also tough one because the twin, they thought that they were being kidnapped by a human, by this kind of like weird scary looking human because their mother is a wolf and they thought that they are wolf and they were being kidnapped by a human. Meanwhile, on the perspective of Faustulus, oh, what a poor human baby. Glad that I saved you guys because otherwise like you will be eaten by the wolf. Now, of course, as the wolf mother of the twin perspective, oh no, my two cubs are being stolen by humans. So Faustulus treat the twin as his own child and then Faustulus teach them how to become a proper human, walk on their feet and after that, you know, using the five magic word, please help and everything. Instead of like, you know, snarling and growling like a wolf, instead of like eating like raw meat and then like they have to eat with the fork and spoon and also probably knife and then be civilized. Instead of like, you know, biting and clawing, they have to be able to spit nicely. So must be a very tough time for Faustulus teaching these twins, especially teaching a feral kids to become a human, civilized human. So year has passed. The twin they grew up as a strong young man, Romulus and Remus, and then it's time for Faustulus to tell them the truth. Now Faustulus tell them the truth about who they are, about their true identity, and Faustulus give them freedom, what to do with their own life as a grown up. So, Romulus and Remus, they decided to rescue their grandfather, yes, which is Numitor, King Numitor. In the process, the twin killed King Amulius, their evil uncle. 
to rescue their grandfather. Now, of course, after they rescued their grandfather, now the grandfather returned to the throne as the rightful king of Kingdom of Latium. And then the grandfather offered the twin the positions in the palace to rule together. Now, apparently the twin they refused, they decided to build their own city. And it was a goodbye for them between the grandfather and the grandsons. And Romulus and Remus, they decided to build for themselves their own city. So they returned to the exact place where they grew up, to one of the nine hills of Rome, with the hope of finding their wolf mother. And of course, according, according to the story, the wolf no longer recognized them anymore. The, the wolf, instead of like welcoming the twin, the wolf ran away from them. So, must be kind of like sad and tragic moment for the twins. They really miss their wolf mother, but then again, the wolf mother no longer recognized them. So in the honor of their wolf mother, the twin decided to build a city on that hill. And so the twins decided to build a city on the place where they used to grow up together with their mother wolf, with their wolf mother. But as they tried to build the city, there's this question that they must answer. What they should name the city after? Hmm. Of course, Romulus claimed, well, of course the city should be named by my name because I'm Romulus. I'm the one who had this idea. But meanwhile, Remus said, well, not you, Romulus. The city should be named after me, Remus. So, and then Romulus says, no, my name. Now Remus says, no, my name. Now Romulus says, no, my name. Now Remus says, no, my name. All right, all right, all right. This is going nowhere. So they both decided to look for a sign from the sky, to look for a sign from the gods. They have this odd traditions of uh, listening to God's advice by watching the birds. Yes, watching the birds in the sky. The Romans, they believe that the birds that flies in the sky, it gives them sign from gods. So Remus picked one of the hill Remus picked one of the hill in Rome, a hill by the name of Aventine Hill, and then he sat there waiting for the birds to fly by on top of his head. And meanwhile, Romulus, he picked the Palatine Hills and waiting for the birds to pass by, to fly by above his head. So they've been waiting for days by now. They've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, on the last day, just before the sunset, Remus was so excited and he was so happy because he saw a six birds, six eagles flying on top of his head. It's a sign that God favored him to build the city on top of the Aventine Hills and then name after his name, Remus. So he immediately ran into his brothers on the other side of the hill. Romulus, Romulus, my brother, look, look, God has favor on me. I have six birds flying on top of my head. And when he arrived on top of the Palatine Hills, 12 eagles fly above Romulus' head. And then, of course, according to the agreement, who won? Romulus won. So they settled, they agreed that somehow the city will be built after Romulus on top of the hill of Palantin. So Romulus, he was so excited to build his city. He worked until late at night building the first foundations of the city. First thing that he built is the city wall. Now, city wall is very important part of the ancient cities because without the city wall, the enemy can easily destroy your city. So he built the city wall overnight. So the next morning, Remus, he was still feel sad. He was still feeling upset because he was defeated because he did not somehow won the competition. So he started insulting his brother Romulus and then he started to making fun of how silly, how ridiculous is the city wall. Because at this moment, the city wall only is just as high as probably up to your ankle. So, and then he make fun of the city wall and then he ridicule how, how ridiculous the wall is, how the wall can be easily jump over. At some point, Remus, he jumped over the city wall just to emphasize his point to his brother, Romulus. And Romulus, took it seriously. He was not happy that his brother Remus, he was not happy that his twin brother Remus jumped over the city wall. And this is what will happen to those who dare to trespass the city wall of Rome, my city. Wah!
and then he hit his twin brothers with single hit and then he died. Romulus, he killed his twin brother. And so there you go, that explains why the city of Rome known as the city of Rome, not Rims. Get it? Romulus, Rome, Remus, Rim. As the city of Rome was built with violence and blood, and so the destiny of the city of Rome, as the city of Rome becomes stronger and stronger, become bigger and bigger, they start to conquering the countryside and they start to conquering another civilization and other nations with violence. And they brought into their city the plunders and the glory that they receive from through violence that they commit overseas. And yes, the Rome, in a few hundred years later, become the mightiest empire ever recorded in history. It become the Roman Empire. City of Rome and its nine hills and then with the legendary Tiber River that flows in between. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I see you guys next time. God bless you guys all. Bye-bye.